This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. By signing up to CuriosityStream with the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, where you can watch the first four episodes of my original series, The Dark Side of the Moon Project, today. Find out more after the video. Music has an incredible way of bringing people together. When you sing a song with someone, you immediately feel a special kind of camaraderie. And when you sing along with hundreds, thousands of people, it's a different kind of feeling entirely. That ability to bring people together means that music has had a long history as a tool of protest. From field haulers to union songs, from civil rights marches to the Black Lives Matter movement, every major act of resistance has had a few anthems that define their protest. And as protests against the Chinese government have raged in Hong Kong for seven months and counting, a number of songs have become the sound of Hong Kong resistance. Let's take a closer look. The current protests in Hong Kong began in the spring of 2019, but they weren't actually the first major protest movement there in recent years. Back in 2014, protesters looking for more transparent elections took to the streets of Hong Kong for 79 days of protests. Those protesters used umbrellas to defend themselves from tear gas, and soon the umbrellas became a symbol of the protest, and it took on the name The Umbrella Movement. A 25-year-old musician named Lo Hu Pan witnessed this tear gassing and decided to write a song about it. Raise the Umbrella. He wrote the song in just a few hours and posted it to Facebook, where it took off. Lo told the South China Morning Post about writing his song. As a Hong Konger and a music lover, I wanted to create a kind of supply for the protesters. I simply hoped my song could comfort and encourage everyone supporting the movement for democracy. But Lo's song did more than just supply comfort. Raise the Umbrella quickly grew to become the definitive anthem of the Umbrella movement. The lyrics are simple but powerful, focusing on feelings of unity and defiance. <laughs> But most of all, it's an optimistic song, one meant to inspire hope for the protesters. Alongside Raise the Umbrella, another protest song came to define the Umbrella movement, though this one came from outside Hong Kong. Do You Hear the People Sing was a song taken from the musical Les Miserables, an adaptation of Victor Hugo's novel of the same name. That musical tells the story of another historic uprising, the Paris Uprising of 1832, where the French people stood up against the reign of the King Louis Philippe. And while the Paris Uprising was ultimately quashed, its influence rung out and 16 years later, Louis Philippe was overthrown in the February Revolution, which established the French Second Republic. Do you hear the people sing capture the thirst for democracy and the radical hope of defiance? Amidst the Umbrella Movement, an unknown activist rewrote the song into Cantonese and it quickly caught on. The use of Do You Hear the People Sing carries a lot of symbolic weight. It shows that the Hong Kong protests aren't just a local scuffle. They're the latest chapter in a long lineage of fights for democracy across the entire globe. When protests broke out again in 2019, Do You Hear the People Sing became one of the go-to protest songs. It was a staple at rallies, and it's easy to find video of thousands of Hong Kongers singing Les Mis. Some of the most powerful performances of Do You Hear the People Sing come from secondary schools in Hong Kong, where students have been singing the song over top of the Chinese national anthem. Do You Hear the People Sing isn't the only international song that's become an anthem for Hong Kong protests. 
Perhaps the most unlikely addition to the Hong Kong soundtrack is Sing Hallelujah to the Lord, a Christian song written by Linda Stassen Benjamin in 1974. Christian protesters in Hong Kong were the first to use this song, but it quickly grew to become a universal anthem of the movement. One reason the song has become an anthem is because of how it's written. It's meant to be sung in a round, so it lends itself well to large groups of people. Furthermore, it has a calming, peaceful effect and simple lyrics that allow it to be sung over and over. If you watch some clips of Hong Kongers singing Hallelujah to the Lord, you can understand the power it has as a protest song. But there's another more practical reason behind the use of this song in particular. Under Hong Kong's public order ordinance, religious gatherings don't qualify as meetings. This means it's much more difficult to arrest protesters when they're singing religious songs. We've talked about some of the songs from outside Hong Kong defining the protest, but of course much of the sound of the Hong Kong protest is created by Hong Kongers themselves. A number of acts from within the city have released their own protest songs, ranging across all genres. There's hip-hop groups like LMF who talk about the protests in their song 2019. And of course, wherever there's protest, punk rockers will be heard. Some of the musicians from Hong Kong's punk scene banded together to release One Voice HK. The cost for change is never free. It's up to you, it's up to me. The metal scene has made their voice heard in the protests too. The most extreme example of this might be Human Betrayer's Dark Age, which describes the current Hong Kong existence as a kind of dystopia. But of all of the music of the Hong Kong protests, one song has become the defining anthem. Glory to Hong Kong. On August 26th, 2019, a musician known only as Thomas posted a song to a pro-democracy forum. After a few notes from the people on the forum, Thomas released a music video for the song on August 31st. It went viral almost immediately. And soon after, it became the new go-to song for Hong Kong protesters. Even as the song became a phenomenon, the composer preferred to remain anonymous, though he did speak about the song to Time magazine. Music is a tool for unity. I really feel like we needed a song to unite us and boost our morale. The message to listeners is that despite the unhappiness and uncertainty of our time, Hong Kong people will not surrender. Lyrically, Glory to Hong Kong details the protest movement across four stanzas, but also celebrates the perseverance of the Hong Kong people. In the final stanza, the song drops one of the most iconic lines of the movement, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times. Glory to Hong Kong has grown to be more than just a protest song. Many Hong Kongers are adopting it as a new national anthem. As of right now though, the future is unclear for Hong Kong. At the time of this video, the protests have been going on for over 7 months and they're showing no signs of slowing down. But as long as the protests go, you know that Hong Kongers will be singing in the streets, singing for unity, singing for hope, and singing in defiance. The Hong Kong protests are just one of a series of questions emerging around China as it becomes the world's most dominant economic force. If you want to learn more about China in the modern world, you should check out Curious Minds, China, on CuriosityStream. That series of short documentaries looks at China's modern existence from a number of angles including political reform, economic development, and urbanization. It's not just that though, CuriosityStream has 
thousands of documentaries on all kinds of topics. And if you sign up for a year of Curiosity Stream with the link in the description, you'll also get free access to Nebula. Nebula is a new streaming platform created by myself and a number of other creators. I've got six original videos on there, including a series on Led Zeppelin and an ongoing series tackling Dark Side of the Moon. If you go to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic, you can get access to both Nebula and CuriosityStream now. That means you'll be able to watch incredible documentaries and original content from independent creators like myself. Not only that, you'll be doing a lot to support my channel, and to support creators looking for a place outside of YouTube. So again, you can try it all now by going to curiositystream.com slash polyphonic, and thanks again for watching.